Hey everybody, so this is going to be your lecture video over um, Unit 4, Section 2. Going to switch over and get started. Alright, so in 4.1 we learned about how to tell if somebody has a postural dysfunction, right? Um, by using a plumb line, on by lining certain things up. But what are some different dysfunctions and how do we deal with them, right? So one of the common ones is, and you'll see it in lots and lots of people, especially in our society, because we're always um, looking down at our phones or looking down at our computer screens and things like that is called forward head, right? So if you look at this picture here, this is what our head should normally be like. Our um, ear should basically be right above our acromion. Um, you'll see this with a lot of people, though, that the ear is forward. And so what's happened here is uh, the muscles in the back, semispinalis capitis and um, levator scapula and uh, upper trapezius have become lengthened. They're overly long and they're overly weak. Um, and the muscles in front, like the scalenes and like sternocleidomastoid, um, and a little bit, I know it's not affecting the neck, but usually what happens is the shoulders even get pulled forward a little bit too, and you'll have tight pecs as well um, that kind of go along with this lots of times. And so that's what causes forward head, right? And so in order to fix it, what we would need to do is stretch these muscles in front that have gotten tight and strengthen the muscles in back that have gotten weak kind of pull everything back. Um, and that's going to be key to understanding thorax, is understanding what I need to stretch and what I, what I need to strengthen, actually, back here, and what I need to stretch, right? What's causing this problem with this person, and how do I fix it? Um, so let's look at another one. Torticollis is also known as um, torticollis, or torticollis is also known as Rhinec. It's caused by shortening of one of the anterior neck muscles, right? So it kind of takes the head and pulls it to the side of one side or the other. So this is really more common in children. Um, they sleep in weird positions and get in, in bad positions, or sometimes they're even born with this because they are kind of not positioned right in the womb. And so those muscles, as they grew, even... Um, really got tight. So it's more common in children, but you will occasionally see it in adults too. I almost have a little bit of this. Um, but if you look at this poor guy, he's got his head kind of stuck and it's kind of rotated. So if you think about it, what muscles are probably tight here? So I'm just going to pause for a second, let you look at it and think about it. And now I'm going to tell you, it's the right muscles right here, your right um, sternocleidomastoid and maybe even scalenes to stump some extent, it's um, are pulling his head down to the right and rotating it. And so to stretch this kid and to lengthen that muscle, we're going to want to um, do the opposite of what the sternocleidomastoid does, right? And so it, the sternocleidoid, sternocleidomastoid or sternocleidomastoid flexes, and so we would want to start extending him. Um, it would bend it to the right, so we would want to start bending laterally, bending his head to the left, and it rotates to um, the opposite side, right, because it starts in the front, goes to the back, and so we would start wanting to rotate it to the same side right to the right side um and so that is what you would do to fix that you would also want to do some strengthening um of the muscles in the back right because these the anterior muscles are too tight and you also probably would want to do some strengthening of the left sternocleidomastoid and scalenes as well to kind of pull everything back into alignment so just some things to kind of think about. Kyphosis um, is, we've talked about this one a bunch, right? Excessive um, thoracic curvature, right? Um, and so this is usually caused by tightness in the front, if you think about it, and weakness like in 
um, your mid and lower trapezius, right? So you'd want to strengthen mid and lower trapezius, and you would want to um, stretch um, pecs, uh, especially pecs. And, but he actually, if you notice, he doesn't just have that. He's got forward head as well. So if you look at where his um, lateral acromion is, it's definitely forward, but look how far his ear is forward over that too. So this guy, we'd want to do um, stretching, stretching of uh, the scalenes and um, sternocleidomastoid, but also of the pecs. And we'd want to strengthen um, levator scapula, um, semispinalis capitis, and all of the trapezius muscle and the rhomboid, uh, the, all the rhomboid muscles as well. Does that make sense? I hope, because if we make those stronger, they're going to kind of pull everything back. And if we stretch these muscles, it's going to loosen everything. So that's part of what we do in, in Therex. Um, so there are other types of kyphotic deformities, right? There's just the natural kyphosis. This is usually caused by muscle imbalance and things like that. There is a gibbous hump. Um, it, it's, it's localized and in a shorter area. Um, and then there's dowager's hump um, that usually happens in postmenopausal women. Um, and it's due to like loss of vitamin D and um, just the chemical changes that go on in a, in a woman's body and things like that. So this can be, we can help these things with physical therapy, but some of these can also be treated in other ways as well with um, hormone replacement therapies and, and making sure people get plenty of sun and things like that as well. Um, with this one, the, the spine itself actually starts to degenerate in those areas. Um, lordosis, um, excessive lordosis here usually caused by posterior pelvic tilt. I mean, sorry, anterior pelvic tilt. So this pelvis is nicely aligned. If you notice here, clearly the pelvis itself and the spine have kind of got this extra lumbar curve. Um, and so there are ways to fix that too as well, right? So they could have tight um, hip flexors and tight, um, quadratus lumborum here that's pulling things out of alignment. So we'd stretch hip flexors, we'd stretch um, quadratus lumborum, and we'd strengthen the abdominals, right? Since the abdominals attach to the top of the pelvis there to try and pull everything. And we'd also try and strengthen the hamstrings to pull everything back into alignment. Scoliosis um, is lateral curvature of the spine, right? Okay. And so We've studied this before, but this is just kind of a refresher. Um, wherever that peak is, is how you would describe um, the scoliosis. So this um, peak of this curve is in the thoracic region, and it goes to the right. So it's right thoracic scoliosis or right thoracic curvature. Um, this is kind of right. Um, where the thoracic and lumbar region begin. So it's called right thor thoracolumbar or thoracic lumbar curve. Um, left lumbar curve, right here. Um, and this one's a little weird because there's a little bit of curve right here, but it's just in response to this. And you can have double curves um, because we've got a right thoracic here and a left lumbar here as well. Um, so just kind of understand what that means. And, and these are usually genetic dysfunctions and there are things we can do to kind of help a little bit, but um, we can't really fix scoliosis. Um, we haven't learned how to do that quite yet. So anyways, that's, that's this section.